Good morning. Yes, it's the ninth wave, the fifth night. What is it? The 20th of August, 2011, 5.33 a.m. And 11, a new beginning, quintessential mastery. I think of lots of things with numbers. They don't always mean exactly the same thing, but certainly similar things. That's not what I'm talking to you about today, however. I've been dealing with Jesus and Christ consciousness and things like that in the past couple of days due to the fact that there's been some Christians that have been challenging me on some points, especially in regard to the Illuminati. and No one has actually challenged me in regard to Lucifer or Satan, but they may as well. Because one of the things that I've noticed about Christianity and the way some Christians hold the Christian teachings is how unforgiving Christians can sometimes be. <laughs> sometimes. I've known Christians that stay unforgiving for a very long time, even in my own family. Yeah, it's true. So the title today, and I went <laughs> almost two minutes before I announced the title, Ninth Wave, True or False? Once evil, always evil. Okay. We messed up. Lock us up and throw away the key. Is that God's solution? Or have we wallowed in the pig pen long enough? As I live, says the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Turn, 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 for why would you choose death when I am offering life to me. God's grace is everlasting and his mercy endures to all generations. I see reconciliation, restoration, and total redemption in the path ahead. This is the time of completion, fulfillment of the promises. I received an email when I came last night, but I uh, looked at it here this morning. I didn't look to see the, uh, see the person's name, actually, but he or she wrote, I try to explain to some people what Christ mind is about, and the inner Christ, which is our actual Savior, that the real historical Jesus tried to tell us about and even died trying. If the Apostles' Creed is correct, then even Jesus proved the love and oneness of God is worth going to hell and back for. Hmm. I like that. I didn't think of using the Apostles' Creed. Somebody asked me recently if I believe that Jesus died for our sins. And of course, being raised a Christian, I never even questioned that. Of course it was true. I believed it. It was the centerpiece of God's whole plan of salvation. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Who was that? Was that Jesus? Or was it Christ? I talked about that yesterday and the difference and the distinction between the two. Some people get that and some people won't, at least not yet. And that's okay. We are each in our stage of understanding and our stage of growth and development and awakening. We're not all at the same place. And God has great compassion and great mercy for each one of us as we struggle, as we really struggle to see. In one case, Jesus healed a blind person, and 
but it wasn't a complete healing yet. And the person said, I see men as tree or trees as men walking. And Jesus touched his eyes again and then he could see clearly. And sometimes, sometimes the spiritual awakening is in stages where we don't see clearly right away. I know I didn't when I was a young Christian. And I know there's young Muslims and young Hindus and young Buddhists and young Jews and young people that, are, that grow up in the world and, and we have limited resources sometimes and certainly limited understanding and we don't see it all clearly but God's love doesn't change We've had Hitler brought up in the past few days. We've had the Illuminati brought up and the dastardly deeds that these people have done collectively. And I do understand. I watched a video some at some point yesterday that someone sent me about the bankers and how they deserve to have humanity turn on them. And I've read articles about how the bankers are going to be among the first ones to be arrested and they're going to end up in the concentration camps that have been built for the resistors and for the people that went against the government but the people that have planned those those concentration camps for us are going to end up in them and I think to myself well there's justice in that what they've what they've planned and built for others, they get to enjoy themselves. We all get to enjoy the fruit of our creations. And our creations are the fruit of our thoughts and our perspectives and how we see the world and ourselves in it, how we see others, the level of forgiveness and compassion that we're willing to give. Are we willing to see through the eyes of God? Are we willing to put on the mind of Christ? Are we really willing to do that or is it just rhetoric that we call ourselves Christians or Muslims or Hindus or Buddhists or Jews? We are people, we are human beings, children of God. Not all Native Americans have it right, but they've always said, as all indigenous religions have always been more holistic in their approach seeing God in everything and we Westerners labeled them pantheists and think that oh how ridiculous to see God in trees and in the rocks and in the and in the sky and in the earth and in the creatures of the planet how crazy to see God in those things God is not that we can't even see God in each other and we're made in the image of God and we can't even love each other and we are God's children at least we call ourselves God's children. Once evil, always evil. Do you not get the message of redemption? Do you not understand the principles of transformation? Do you not understand the divine alchemy of turning the lead into gold? We are the lead. We are the gold. It is our consciousness that has to rise. Salvation does come through the inner Christ, the Christ in each one of us. That was what Jesus was telling us. Hey, the kingdom of heaven is within you. You are God's. The scriptures even said it. The psalmist wrote it, Jesus said. You are God's. Do you understand that, Christian friend? Do you understand that religious person? Do you understand that atheist? Do you understand that person who is an agnostic who doesn't know? This ninth wave is about awakening. It's about compassion. It's about unity consciousness. It's about love. It's about truth. That's what it's all about. Because God doesn't see once evil, always see evil. Of course that's false from God's perspective. Maybe it's not yet from your perspective. But it will be at some point because you're going to see how the love of God touched your life and enabled you to see 
when you were blind, enabled you to love when all you felt was hatred and you wanted revenge instead of forgiveness for what they did to me or what they did to us. Yeah, the Illuminati has killed Christians and a lot of other people too. Haven't we all killed each other with unkindness, with unforgiveness? But in the end, it's not really each other that we're doing this to. We're doing it to ourself. We're doing it to our own heart, our own soul. We wanted to see what it's like to live without God. We've created a world where we forgot that God was part of us, that God was among us, as us. We forgot, and it's okay. It's part of the journey. It's part of the experience. It's part of the lesson, if you will. Now we're being given the opportunity to heal it all, to bring it back to completion and wholeness, to love each other, to love ourselves, to love God, to fulfill the promises, God fulfilling them in us, through us, as us. Do you not see it yet? I try to bring you these messages from the heart of God. I try to help people see the world as it really is, as we've created it, and as it's opening up and as it's changing. I want you to see the transformation. I want you to see the love and feel it and know it in your own heart and in your own soul. It's not about religion. Religion has been very unforgiving. How many religious wars are we going to continue to fight? Yeah, we can look back at the history. How many wars have seemed to be over religious nonsense in many cases? Because we're Catholic and they're Protestant or vice versa. Or we're Muslims and they're Christians or vice versa. Or they're Jews and we're Muslims. Or we're Hindus. It doesn't matter. You see, it doesn't matter. We're all God's children. Christ is in every one of us. The divine didn't didn't divide itself so that we could have Christian brothers and sisters and Jewish brothers and sisters and Hindu and Muslim brothers and sisters and Buddhist brothers. Yeah, we have all of those. But the words, the religions, they're just words. They're just words. There's only one of us here, and that's God having many human experiences. And God in each of us crying out to the other, can you see me yet? Do you recognize the divine that's in me, that I am? Can you recognize it yet? When are you going to see? When are you going to wake up? Jesus descended into hell, the Apostles' Creed says. Okay. He did that so that we would wake up from our nightmare, so that we would become enlightened, filled with light. But if the light that's in you is darkness, how great that darkness is, Jesus said. What was he talking about? When the light that's in us would call for the execution of the wicked, which is not God's heart at all, then that light that's in us is dark because it's divided because it's separate. There is no separation. That's what the ninth wave is about. And this fifth night, I want it to be about destruction of those old ways of seeing, because it's only in the new ways of seeing that transformation can bring the peace and the happiness that we all seek to our planet and to each other. Namaste. I truly love you, and so does God.